Hello everyone, you're Radar Contact and welcome to another VAS Aviation video. In this VAS Aviation lesson, we'll go over the atmosphere, the parts of the atmosphere, what it is composed of, and how its components affect flight. For sure, you have sometimes questioned yourself about why an aircraft like the Airbus A380 on the video can fly. No matters if you are a pilot already or not. But why? Part of the job is obviously done by the aircraft itself. Structure and aerodynamics are important when building an aircraft, but those are to be based on many things. One of them is the air the aircraft is going to fly through. We call it atmosphere. Understanding the Earth's atmosphere is essential to a pilot since it is the environment the aircraft is going to be in. There are many different processes that take place within the atmosphere, but we'll take a look at them in the future. For now, let's talk about what the atmosphere is and what its properties and components are. An atmosphere is defined as a layer of gases surrounding a planet or other material body that is held in place by the gravity of that body. There are more than 20 gases in our atmosphere, but we'll focus on the four main gases. The most common gas is nitrogen, covering 78% of the atmosphere. Oxygen makes up 21% of the atmosphere and is essential for life and also for the combustion of fuel of the aircraft engines. Just less than 1% of the atmosphere is argon with carbon dioxide making up most of the remaining. There are many other gases covering the remaining percent, but they are in such a small quantity that we won't focus on them. These are called trace gases, including carbon monoxide, helium, methane, ozone, and hydrogen. There is, however, one other gas that can be found in our atmosphere that is really important for the performance of an aircraft. We're talking about water vapor. Although it is invisible as a gas, it can be seen when in solid or liquid state. Clouds and rain are examples of its liquid state, while ice, snow, or hail are examples of its solid state. The ratio of the partial pressure of water vapor to the equilibrium vapor pressure of water at a given temperature is known as relative humidity. 100% humidity would be visible as a cloud when the air can hold the water vapor in its vapor state and condenses into water. The amount of gases in the atmosphere remain constant up to an altitude of 60 km. From there on, gravitational separation changes the composition of the atmosphere. For the purposes of the principle of flight, we will just consider the lowest part of the atmosphere, so we will always assume that the composition remains constant. The atmosphere is divided into four main layers. Starting from the nearest from the Earth, we have the troposphere, which extends approximately 11 kilometers above the Earth. Then we have the stratosphere, which extends up to 50 kilometers above the Earth. Next layer is the mesosphere, which extends up to 80 kilometers above the Earth. And finally, the thermosphere. Between the troposphere and the stratosphere, there is a boundary called the tropopause. The top altitude of the tropopause changes depending on the latitude, but we'll call the average of 36,090 feet. Conventional jet aircraft are limited to fly up to the stratosphere, while light propeller aircraft usually fly inside the troposphere. Only research and survey special aircraft are designed to fly within the mesosphere, and only space rockets are able to fly in the thermosphere. The temperature changes with increasing altitude as the Earth is heated by the Sun. Therefore, we conclude that the temperature decreases as the altitude increases within the troposphere as we get farther away from the surface. We will only focus on how the temperature changes within the troposphere and stratosphere as though it is in these layers where aircraft fly. The temperature remains constant from the tropopause to the lower parts of the stratosphere just before rising again. General aviation pilots will be restricted to fly no higher than 10,000 feet in most of occasions by several factors. The weather. General aviation aircraft are now designed for such high altitudes and more importantly, the oxygen we need to breathe. 
We have already learned that the composition of the atmosphere remain constant at lower altitude, but there is one more factor that takes place in this situation. The atmospheric pressure. The air is a still substance which contains molecules, and these molecules have their own mass. Pressure is defined as the force applied perpendicular to the surface of an object per unit area, over which that force is distributed. A force is defined as a push or a pull, and it will be produced when a mass is accelerated. The units of measurement for mass and acceleration are those stated in the international system. The unit for mass is the kilogram, and the meter per square seconds for acceleration. The product of these two is force, measured as newtons. The mass of the air is accelerated toward the Earth by gravity, which will give us a force. If we consider that force acting on an area of one square meter, we will have a column of air of one square meter extended upwards. That is what we call force per square meter, also known as pressure. This pressure acting on the Earth's surface is called the atmospheric pressure. The unit of measurement for pressure is the newton per square meter, called the pascal. The pascal results in a very small unit, so in aviation we use the hectopascal. Hecto means 100, so 1 hectopascal is 100 pascals. Another common unit that is used in aviation is the millibar. 1 millibar is equal to 1 hectopascal. There are other units and terms to refer to pressure, such as pounds per square inch or inches of mercury, but since these are not international units, we will not be basing on them. The air pressure acts in all directions, so the air pressure would act on an aircraft that is flying in it. This atmospheric pressure, acting on anything different to the surface of the Earth, is also known as static pressure, and this is the pressure we will be referring to in the following lessons. It was explained before that the pressure of the atmosphere was given because of gravity pulling the mass of the air downwards onto the Earth's surface. This will lead to a higher amount of air molecules as we get closer to the surface, which will directly affect the mass. We conclude that the pressure is not constant as we go farther away from the surface of the Earth. Static pressure reduces with an increasing altitude. This is why breathing is difficult at high altitudes, since there is less pressure to force oxygen into our lungs. It is a common mistake to think that the amount of oxygen reduces with the altitude, and we learned it is not that way, though it is the pressure which reduces. Same thing happens with the combustion of an engine reducing the flow of oxygen through. This fact of number of molecules in the air at different altitudes leads us to another important term air density. Density is defined as the mass of a substance per unit volume of that substance. Regarding the air, we specify the volume as 1 cubic meter, being its density unit a kilogram per 1 cubic meter. Similar to the pressure, density reduces with increasing altitude, but this is not the only factor, as the temperature also affects density. Higher temperatures reduce density, as the cooler temperatures will increase the density of a substance. We previously learned that the pressure and temperature decrease with increasing altitude, but it is the pressure which takes the greatest effect for density. The amount of water vapor will also affect density, as it is the amount of air we consider in a cubic meter, not the amount of water. If we take a cubic meter and we introduce molecules of water, there must be a reduction of air molecules. We conclude that the specified volume with molecules of water is less dense than a volume full of air molecules. The more water vapor in the air, the lower the air density is. The atmosphere changes every day, so a standard atmosphere was set in 1964 by the International Civil Aviation Organization ICAO, and also known as ISA, or International Standard Atmosphere. ISA assumes that at mean sea level, or MSL, the temperature is 15 degrees Celsius, 
The pressure is 1013.25 hectopascals or millibars and the density is 1.225 kg per cubic meter. From mean sea level to 11 km or 36,090 feet, the temperature decreases by 1.98 degrees Celsius per 1,000 feet, generally rounded up to 2 degrees Celsius per 1,000 feet, or 0.65 degrees Celsius per 100 meters. From 11 km to 20 km, the temperature remains constant at minus 56.5 degrees Celsius. Notice that at 11 km and above, the temperature no longer decreases with altitude. At this stage, we would have reached the top of the troposphere and we encounter the tropopause, in which we already learned the temperature remains constant. The layer above the tropopause is the stratosphere, and since this is a lesson for a conventional light and medium aircraft, we will not go over further properties of the atmosphere beyond this layer. We finished the lesson about the atmosphere. I really hope you enjoyed the content and learned new things about the aviation world. If you have any questions related to this lesson or any other topic, don't hesitate and leave it right below on the comment section. It's VAS Aviation. Frequency change approved and see you guys.